Hello and welcome back. And for today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create this melting effect using geometry nodes and a little bit of simulation. Nodes. It took me two weeks to finally figure out how to create this effect. And I learned a lot about geometry nodes while doing so. So I really hope you do too. And it's going to be an interesting video. So let's get right into it. All right. So we have a new Blender file here. We are going to go to the geometry nodes tab. Let's click on new to add a new geometry node setup. Subdivide this cube. And that is to add a little bit more geometry to a cube because we're going to need a lot of it. Basically, if you're melting something, that geometry should be deleted as soon as it's melted. So we're going to add delete geometry node here and i don't want to delete the entire cube i only want to delete the section where the other object of mine is closer to the cube let's add another object and we'll use a uv sphere for that let's bring it outside to shade it smooth i want to be able to delete a part of this cube which is closer to the sphere and in order to do that let's bring our sphere into our geometry node setup we're going to set the object info node to relative and let's take the output of geometry and add a geometry proximity node here and then we get this output that is called distance we're going to use this to delete the faces on the cube i would say wherever the distance is less than one or less than equal to one i want that geometry to be deleted so let's add one let's take the results plug it into the delete geometry node and it's unmuted and if you see now if i move my sphere the geometry on the cube will be deleted basis of the position of the sphere what would happen now is that if i create my simulation using this setup it will emit or it will start emitting the melting effect out of the entire cube but i don't want to do that i only want a very small part of this cube is i want only this section of the cube to emit the melting particles and the rest of the cubes to, should remain constant so how do i go about doing that we already have this delete geometry node let's duplicate that and let's bring this in right and let's only look at this for now so that we know what's happening and let's take this and plug this in here so we have a section of the top part of the cube that is getting deleted now i also want only a limited section of the cube right so i only basically want this cut of it so in order to do that i can also add another node here and let's plug this in right into it and let's change it from less than to greater than or equal to i'm going to say greater than or equal to 1.2 and let's combine both of these with an and node of the same okay sorry with an or i would say that if this sphere is somewhat between a distance of one and 1.2 only then keep the geometry rest everything else should be deleted and if you see a very small section of the cube is kept and the rest of it is automatically deleted now that we have a section that we can use to emit particles let's create some particles here right so we're going to use a distribute points on faces node and let's plug this in we're going to take the seed and add it add a scene time node and take the frame output and plug it into the scene in order to now create particles every frame we can also add a simulation zone into our node setup and let's take the distribute points on faces node plug this in here and let's take this and plug this right here we will also use a join geometry node to join the distribute points on faces node on every frame into the simulation zone all right so now we have particles that are getting created but if we want a melting effect we want the particles to flow downwards one way we can do that is we can use a set position node also add a little bit more randomness to the way it flows downwards so i'm going to use a noise texture to do that so also add a subtract node to correct for the offset of noise if i want it to flow downwards i can just change this to let's say 0.6 now the particles are flowing downwards but let's also make sure that the noise pattern changes every second so we'll change it from 3d to 4d and take the second output and plug it in the double section of the noise section and let's change the noise from 5 to 2 we're going to increase the detail to 5 and if you're thinking why am i doing it without thinking about it it's because i've already experimented with it 20 times and uh, i remember the numbers now. now the noise is still way too much for my liking so i'm going to duplicate the subtract or change it to scale and let's change the scale to 0 0.05 also add a little bit more randomness into the way things are flowing so i'm going to take this vector output of the subtract node 
and let's add a random value. We are going to keep the values, all the values at 0 0.5, except for the Z value, because the Z value is the one that is defining the velocity towards the ground. I'm going to change this to 0 0.65 to 0 0.95. And again, you can, you can experiment with this number uh, based on what you think is right, but essentially every frame is going to give a different velocity between 0 0.6 to 0 0.9 to every particle in your simulation. That just gives it a little bit more natural effect. The scale defines the speed or, or the intensity of the noise as well. So let's also make this random. I'm going to add a random value node to it as well. And for this, I'll just use second because I don't want it to change every frame. Let's use a value between 0.05 to 0.1 simulation. So let's use a join geometry node here. Let's bring it back. Now I know it's it's very scattered. So let's increase this to about a thousand, the number of particles, and you can somehow visualize the melting effect. Let's let's make it into a reality. And the way we do that is we change the points from points to a volume. So we're going to use points to volume now here to change that volume into a mesh. So let's bring in a volume to mesh node here, right? And let's make sure it's on about. Let's plug this into the join geometry node. And this looks way big. So I don't want that. So I'm going to change the radius to 0 0.07. We'll change the density to 0 0.5 five and the voxel to 128. This voxel will basically define how, how much resolution your fluid simulation have. Now I will leave it up to you. I have data PC, so it's probably not going to be able to handle more than this. So if you can go more, I would advise go more. Now after this, I'm going to add set smooth shade node, and that is to make sure that I remove these pieces that I was seeing. Simulation is ready, but there is a big flaw in this which we don't see right now so let me show you what i mean right so let's bring this cube up a little i will add a plane here and yeah, let's scale it a bit if i replay the simulation if you see uh, if there is a different object in space it's not accounting for it because there is no collision properties that these particles have and it's just going to pass to the plane so we have to add a different node setup here to be able to achieve that let me just make the plane look a little bit better so i'm going to add a solidify modifier and ink so zero two should do click on our cube again so let's bring in the plane into our node setup we are going to keep it relative again and this time i'm going to add a node that is called raycast the way this node works is basically it's going to cast the rays out of the plane and see what is the position of the particles relative to the plane. I know it doesn't make much sense right now, so let me demonstrate it. Let's plug this in and we are going to use hit distance as uh, our value uh, in the viewer node. Now, if you look at it, any particles that is touching the plane are black in color and if they get lighter and lighter, the farther they go away from the, the, the plane. And the reason behind that is because it has a value or this hit distance output has a value which is the lowest when it is touching the plane and the highest when it's away from the plane. We're going to use this raycast to define which particles are touching the plane and then will change the direction of those particles to flow onto the plane instead of just directly passing through the plane. We are going to need a position node. So let's bring in a position node. And we are going to use this position output as a source position of the particles. We'll also use a length node and use the value from the output of this length node as the ray length. So ray length is nothing but what is the size of the ray that this plane is casting to check the distance of the particle. Now the last thing is the ray direction. And this one was a little tricky because it may be a while to figure it out. But basically you take the position output and you bring in a vector rotate node. There are these settings that you need to do. I don't know why they work, but they work. And uh, I'm, I'm assuming that is because since it's a flat surface uh, and I'm rotating the angle to 90 degrees on X and Y axis, I don't know what changing the center to 10 means, but, but it works. And then if you plug this in here, it just targets anything that is coming from the top. Since I have all of this setup, I can just duplicate the set position and use this hit distance to define which particles I want to be affected with, with a different position. So the way I do that is I add a less than and I'm going to set our value for 
see you on this TV and let's plug it into the set position. And let's say I want to change the position of those particles on a y-axis with 0.1 meter. If I do that, can you see that particles that are touching the plane are moving by 0.1 meter as soon as they touch the plane. But the issue is that they're still passing through. And the reason behind that is that we already have the set position mode before this, and it's giving it a velocity or the z-axis, which means that it, it still wants it to keep moving on the z-axis as well. So we somehow have to create a setup that says that when a particle is close to the plane, it should only move basis of this set position mode and this set position mode should be disabled unless and until the particle has passed the plane. And the way we do that is very simple. We, we can just simply say that if it is less than equal to 0.1, use this and we can use a node that is called not and take that and plug this into the selection of this set position node. Particles should just move on the y-axis of the plane. All right, so now we are affecting the particles the way we wanted, but obviously I don't want them to move the y-axis, so let's create a node group that can basically affect it in a more dynamic way. We use another noise texture right here, and let's duplicate the scene type node too. I'm gonna bring in the second and plug it into the W, and let's take the color output here, let's add another subtract node, Let's duplicate this one we have and let's give it a value of 0.5 overall. Let's plug this in to the set position. Oh. Now, if you look at it, it's just randomly getting distributed. That's not what we want. What I also wanted, I want it to be moving towards the edge of the plane too at the same time. We duplicate the position node. So the position node gives it velocity on all the directions. So we're going to use this. I'm going to scale it down a little, which means I want its effect to be very minimum. So let's scale it down to 0.1. And then we can just add it into our original setup. And let's plug this in. And let's see. Now the effect is still way too much. And since we added the position node, it again, got a velocity which is in the z direction and we don't want that so let's duplicate this let's change it to multiply and let's change the value the z axis to zero right so now we don't have a z axis velocity but it's still very very intense uh, the effect so let's reduce that by using another scale node and i'm going to just keep a value of 0.1 and now if you see the effect is looking like a fluid. So let's go back to the original setup of ours. So it's essentially looking like it's melting things and you can control the intensity of it by either changing the scale of this if you want it to move more intensely towards the edge or changing the intensity of this to change the overall effect altogether, right? You can basically create that melting effect just by animating this sphere here and the closer it is the way the more it's gonna melt i guess that's about it if you want to know how i created the material for it that changes color basis of the location of the sphere versus this the blender file is available on my patreon i've already uploaded it there and you can just simply download it but i really hope you learned something new today and this video was helpful if it was please do like share and subscribe i'm gonna see you in the next one